in this study, obviously there's no combination of steroids and MOTC, but we can discuss it anyway. Let's see. Online when reading sources mentioned that it improves heart function. Yes, most of the animal models show that it improves heart function. Even this animal model shows that it improves heart function. Could MOTC cause ventricular issues through enlargement potentially, but we'll address that when we go over the study. It would be awesome if you could expand on this in the Q&A video. Much love. So that's why we're here right now. Psycho CZ. Hey Steve, awesome video. One question. The main concern that came up was the risk of a heart hypertrophy. Yes, we'll address that. How serious is that when combined with steroids? So unfortunately, scientific evidence in combination of steroids and MOTC uh, are not available. So we can dubiously extrapolate. Uh, you have something like athlete's heart. Athletes that don't take steroids anyway still have an enlarged heart, albeit human, human, uniformly enlarged. <laughs> Let me take a sip of water so the dry mouth is gone. So athlete's heart, basically what the cardiologist always likes to use as an analogy. You have a normal heart that's the size of an orange and your heart is the size of a grapefruit. Now, this is not the grapefruit that Kai Green is looking for. <laughs> I had to throw it in there, like, dude. <laughs> you don't have a fucking hole in there uh, for Kai Green to fuck or lick. <laughs> Mental images, oh my God, <sighs> thank God. Uh, I didn't watch that more than once or twice to confirm I didn't like it. So uh, the cardiologist will say that your heart is uh, larger than average, but human, human, uniformly enlarged. And then of course you have left ventricular hypertrophy due to um, blood pressure being too elevated. And then the heart is really squeezing against the blood pressure, fucking up your aorta and uh, and uh, your cardiovascular system. And then obviously your kidneys down the road as well, or down the... Uh, blood flow or the road of blood flow as well and they that's how you get left ventricular hypertrophy right from unmanaged blood pressure now um athlete's heart has nothing to do with blood pressure it just means that you need more oxygen and need more blood uh, flowing through your body to keep up this physical demand and then when you take steroids your blood pressure goes up and then this athlete's heart turns into left ventricular hypertrophy where it's bigger and then disproportionately bake on the left ventricular and then maybe your aorta is fucked as well um in this study, obviously there's no combination of steroids and MOTC, but we can discuss it anyway. Let's see. Uh, in, online, when reading sources mentioned that it improves heart function, yes, most of the animal models show that it improves heart function. Even this animal model shows that it improves heart function. Could MOTC cause ventricular issues through enlargement, potentially, but we'll address that when we go over the study. It would be awesome if you could expand on this in the Q&A video, much love. So that's why we're here right now. So let's uh, go through this paper, which I prepared in advance. Let's see, and I've linked it, uh, I'll link it down below. So this is the, the citation, let me put that in the, in here real quick so I don't forget it. Let's see, changes of body weight and heart weight index. So that's the index between body weight and the uh, the changes of the heart weight. So they, they calculate the body weight against the changes in the heart weight. Uh, let's see, changes of body weight and heart weight index after MOTC treatment during exercise training. The body weights of rats in groups E, that's exercise, and ME, that's MOTC and exercise, were significantly lower than those in group C. Group C is the control group. And in the body and the body weight of rats was similar for rats in group M, E, and E. So that's exercise and uh, MOTC and exercise alone. The net weight for hearts, uh, let's see, the net weight for hearts from rats in group uh, MOTC and exercise were greater than the group of the control, right? So no exercise, no MOTC. So again, the wet weight of the hearts in the, myth, the MOTC and exercise group were bigger than the control groups, the group that did not take mod c and did not do any exercise while wet weight was similar for the hearts from rats from group uh, exercise and mod c and exercise All right so comparing well we'll look in the graph a little bit later in scientific evidence sometimes it's a little bit hard to read out loud and these guys love to uh, have uh, tongue tisters and mental masturbation for the the vocabulary that they use that's why i translate everything to the evidence-based unique characteristics so we can actually understand what the fuck they're talking about Let's see, the heart weight index, so that's comparing the body weight to the wet weight of the heart, is a useful preliminary indicator of cardiac hypertrophy. The heart weight index of the rats in the group that only did exercise and the group that did uh, used MOTC and exercise 
were greater than in group C. So that's athletes' hearts, and then greater in the the group that also took mod C, with no difference between uh, hearts weight index of rats in group E and ME. So that's basically very similar. So even though mod C mice cause cardiac hypertrophy, that's only in combination with exercise, and exercise alone also causes cardiac hypertrophy. So let's look at the graph real quick. Here you see uh, A, that's the body weight. So in the control group, you see that body weight is higher than the exercise group and the MOTC and exercise group, probably because exercise and MOTC contributes to fat loss or body weight loss. Then the heart wet weight in the control group is lower than the exercise group and the MOTC plus exercise group. And you see that between exercise and MOTC plus exercise, that this bar is a little bit higher, but it's not that much higher when compared to the control group who did not exercise and then the group who did do exercise. So the changes from control, no exercise to exercise is greater than the changes from exercise to mod C and exercise. And then the, let's see, what was it? The heart weight index comparing control to exercise and mod C plus exercise. You see that exercise actually has a higher uh, heart weight index compared to mod C and exercise. So you could say that body weight goes down less but heart wet weight goes up more. Um, and that's why there's differences in heart weight index. Now it's still a little bit more significant than comparing that to exercise alone. So I would say that the risk for developing cardiac hypertrophy is greater when combining mod C with exercise than exercise alone. And that will probably be even greater when combining mod C with exercise and uh, anabolic androgenic steroids. Unless, 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 unless you use something like Nibivolol or Telmasartan to control your blood pressure. And of course, Nibivolol also reduces your heart rate. So that reduces the, the cardiac strain uh, directly, right? Even though anabolic androgenic steroids will work on the androgen receptors and increase your blood pressure. If you block the beta receptors with Nibivolol, reducing your heart rate and then reducing how forceful it contracts and reducing your blood pressure, then you don't have this resistance within the heart. And thus, left ventricular hypertrophy, when you do strenuous exercise combined with MOTC and anabolic androgenic steroids, should not be as severe. Could it still occur? Potentially. Will it occur more than a regular athlete's heart? We don't know. We don't know. So um, if you're worried, don't take MOTC. And otherwise, do your echocardiogram before, during, and after and see if you get an alarming acceleration of uh, left ventricular hypertrophy and cardiac enlargement. And then this continue. I've combined all at the same time, vigorous strenuous exercise, MOTC, and copious amounts of anabolic androgenic steroids, and I've done an echocardiogram, and even though I have borderline left ventricular hypertrophy, we're talking about one millimeter into the range where it's considered left ventricular hypertrophy, and I have, well, a, a solid athlete's heart, because I train like a fucking animal, <laughs> more so than these uh, rats in the animal study, um, so what, you know, you can't win, you can't win.